Hello everybody and welcome to my February 2021 a reading wrap up. So I just have the one book for you today and that is Untold Stories by Alan Bennett. Um, this has got a bunch of his like prose, various bits and bobs of writing, it's also got a lot of his journals. Um, so because of that it was a bedtime read for me, at least for most of it. I read like 500 pages in bed and then brought it out and swapped it in to uh, be my main read just to finish it off. Pretty good. I guess I'd give it like a 3 out of 5, um, it's a lot to read and I don't think you'd particularly want to read it unless you were an Alan Bennett fan, but I am, so glad I picked it up um, and I'm glad I've ticked it off as well because he's got a lot of big old books like this and I'm just like, oh, like it's okay but reading 10 years worth of diary entries from someone is just... I don't, there's no author that I like that much, like even Stephen King, I'd only vaguely be interested you know but yeah tick that off dane reads all right i have read the scarecrow of oz by l frank baum this is number what number nine ish in the wizard of oz series um the last book was a bit mad but it was okay at least i thought so i think joel who i buddy read this, these with joel swagman didn't like it as much as i did um and i just thought it was okay um, this one was pretty fun. The only thing is, is it didn't really need to be an Oz book. I mean, it's kind of got that typical Oz thing going at this point where it's called the Scarecrow of Oz, but the Scarecrow plays a very minor role in it. Um, and then like Dorothy and friends only show up at the end to make a bit of a cameo. So actually, I think the whole story would have read better if it had been disconnected from Oz. Um, I mean, as I say, I still enjoyed reading it. It was still all right, probably like 3.5 out of 5. I'm not going to say too much more because as you can see I'll be doing a full review um, but yeah it was all right I'm still enjoying the series enough to continue. Hello I have a couple of books to wrap up for you today the first of them is Little Miss Wise's Winning Walk um, basically a skateboarding thing happens she gets involved in a skateboard race it's all right like 3.5 out of 5 Roger Hargreaves another one of the Little Miss books picked this up at a charity shop because I hadn't read this one and then I read Ash by James Herbert, so I give this like a probably a 3.5 out of 5. It was definitely a lot longer than it needed to be, um, but it was okay. Ghost story about like a haunted um, haunted castle, and um, it's like where rich people basically go as like a retreat. Comrack Castle, I think it was called. Um, and yeah, it was okay. It was a, probably a satisfactory ending to the trilogy. I've not been the biggest fan of it in general, to be honest. But um, yeah, it was alright. Uh, full review coming soon. But yes, that's another James Herbert ticked off. And as you can see, this one was a chonky boy. Then I read Casse Noisette by Claude Clement and Frédéric Combi. Uh, this is like a children's book in French. It's not quite a bon dessinée because it's just like an illustrated children's book. Um, it is The Nutcracker. Um, I don't know the story of the Nutcracker and my French wasn't quite good enough to properly follow along with this. Um, I did pick up a few bits here and there. Um, but yeah, I was mostly reading it for like to discover new words and vocabulary and stuff like that. But yeah, it was pretty good. I probably, well, I'll give it like a 3 out of 5, it was alright. It was beautiful to look at. I think that was the most interesting thing. A bit strange to read it, not during Christmas though. Then I read No One Is Too Small To Make A Difference by Greta Thunberg. Um, this is basically some of her speeches and that leads to my main criticism about this which is that she reused literally verbatim parts of one speech at another speech. Now granted that is what you do if you make speeches, that makes perfect sense. But it's then a bit weird that when the speeches are then printed because you're like you've said this four times and this book's only 60 odd pages and like as i say it would literally be the same paragraph verbatim um but i do agree with pretty much everything she said in this and it was like an interesting little primer um it doesn't really provide any sort of solutions to uh, the climate crisis but it does certainly do a good job of kind of inspiring you to want to do more about it um so yeah like 3.5 out of 5 is all right i will be doing a little review although it won't take me long because i didn't do many tabs then i read the world's wife by carol ann duffy so this is a poetry collection uh free verse poetry which i'm always a fan of um it's actually not uh carol ann duffy's style it isn't necessarily that closely aligned with the kind of poetry that I enjoy, um, but I can appreciate it for what it is. And I did like the concept here, which is that she basically writes poems about famous people's wives. Um, like for example, let's read this one, Mrs. Rip Van Winkle. I sank like a stone into the still deep waters of late middle age, aching from head to foot. I took up food and gave up exercise. It did me good. And while he slept, I found some hobbies for myself. 
painting, seeing the sights I'd always dreamed about. The Leaning Tower, the Pyramids, the Taj Mahal. I made a little watercolour of them all. But what was best, what hands down beat the rest, was saying a non too fond farewell to sex. Until the day I came home with this pastel of Niagara, and he was sitting up in bed rattling Viagra. So yeah, uh, like three, a week 3.5 out of 5, but I am glad I read it. And then I read In the Heart of the Amazon Forest by Walter Henry Bates. So this was written in, uh, or yeah, I think The Journey at least was in 1959, uh, 1859, sorry. So this is like travel writing, but it's also historical travel writing. And it's kind of cool because you get to see what the Amazon rainforest looked like all those years ago. It's obviously very different these days due to deforestation. Actually kind of goes quite well with the Greta Thunberg book. Um, this is also an excerpt of a longer book, so you could go off and read that if you wanted to, to get more context. But I just enjoyed this, um, just for this sort of little introduction. It's also part of a whole series of travel writing, which I think is quite cool. Um, and he also then became like a proponent of uh, Darwinism as well, so that was interesting too. But yeah, like a 3.5 out of 5, pretty interesting, very well written and you'll learn a lot about animals and nature and vampire bats and mad ants. Hello, it's -a me, Mario, and I have five books to talk to you about. Four of them are Mr. Men books, so they're all by Roger Hargreaves. We'll give them just a block 3.5 out of five. You know how it is, I'm just sort of slowly working my way through all these books. There are many more of them than I thought there were, to be honest, but anyway. Little Miss Sunshine and the Wicked Witch, Mr. Nosy and the Beanstalk, Mr. Men, A White Christmas, Little Miss Lucky and the Naughty Pixies. So we read those. Um, and then I read Daryl by Jackie S. So, this book was very good. I gave it 4.5 out of 5. It's up there, so my, I think, I guess my top four books so far this year have been this, Alias Grace by Margaret Atwood, uh, Billy Summers by Stephen King, The Card Turner by Louis Sackar. All of them have been excellent. This one has probably been the edgiest. <laughs> um, I'm just going to read you the blurb here. Uh, you'll have to check out my full review. Um, I will say I know the editor-in-chief of Clash Books, um, and I had a very brief conversation with Jackie S because I saw a review of this somewhere else, possibly uh, from Say Kevy here on YouTube. Um, and so I, I sent it to the guy who runs uh, Clash Books, and then he tagged Jackie S, and we were just having a little chat. And that's one of the reasons why I wanted to get to it, although I've just heard so many good things, and it, it, is, it does deserve them. So, blurb. Daryl Cook is a man who seems to have everything. A quiet home in Western Oregon, a beautiful wife, and a lot of friends to fuck her while he watches. But as he explores the cuckolding lifestyle, he finds himself tugging at threads that threaten to unravel his marriage, his town, and himself. With empathy and humour, debut author Jackie S crafts a kaleidoscopic meditation on marriage, manhood, dreams, basketball, sobriety, and the secret lives of Oregonians. So, as, as it says, she's a debut author. Um, what I think is interesting is, y you wouldn't think from reading this that it was written by a debut author. You also wouldn't think it was an indie book. I personally don't think, I think it's really well done. So yeah, I gave this a 4.5 out of 5, and you'll almost certainly see this in my top books of the quarter, top cooks of the quarter. Um, unless I have some really good reading weeks ahead, which I wouldn't mind, but I think you'll probably see this again. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Rosemary's Baby by Ira Levin. Picked this up in a charity shop. Bit of a bargain find. It's actually been on my wish list for quite a while now. It's my first time reading Ira Levin. I do also want to read The Stepford Wives. This is basically about a woman named Rosemary who has a baby, but there are some, there's weird stuff going on. It's kind of like a like a almost a haunted house story not quite because it's kind of haunted by people as opposed to ghosts um i mean there's an intro in this and it was a really interesting introduction by uh, chuck paulinick and one of the reasons why it was interesting is it's like this it's like four pages uh, i think that's it that's the that's the extent of the introduction and he just makes the case that before this came along everything was very much you traveled to where the haunted place was like you ended up in a you know, a cottage in the middle of the woods, or you went to Dracula's castle, for example. And um, so, you know, people living in, in an inner city in the United States would feel safe. And then this came along and it's just set in the middle of New York City. Um, and it kind of brought that, that kind of horror element home, I guess. Horror's coming home, it's coming home. Um, 
yeah, really well written. Um, quite a lot to talk about, I think, as well. It wasn't like a perfect novel for me, but it was a strong four out of five. And as I say, um, check out check out my review because I did the sticky tabs because I, I, there was plenty to talk about in it. Hello, everybody. I have some books to wrap up for you today. These are all Roger Hargreaves Mr. Men books from the latest batch I bought online. I'm probably about done buying job lots of these now. Um, so there is there's still about 15 or 20 that I haven't read that I do want to read so I can kind of tick off the series. Um, but it's, I'm getting diminishing returns now, so I'll buy like 20 of them at once, and there's only four that I haven't read, you know. Anyway, uh, these are all 3.5 out of 5, they're all just okay. Uh, Little Miss Bossy, Mr. Dizzy, Mr. Clever, Mr. Men Meet Father Christmas, Mr. Uppity, Mr. Cheerful, and Mr. Good. There we go. Hello, I just have the one book to update for you today, and that is uh, The Necessary Aptitude, a memoir by Pam Ayres. Uh, Pam Ayres is a poet uh, whose work I rather enjoy, and uh, she just is a decent writer in general. Uh, this is basically a memoir of her youth. So she was born just after the war, and so you kind of see a lot of what it was like in post-war England in the 1950s, 1960s. Um, she travelled around the world a bit and then it kind of covers up to when she got her, her start uh, as a performer as well. Overall really interesting memoir, did enjoy it, I gave it a solid 4 out of 5 and a full review of this is coming soon, but I uh, would recommend. Hello everybody, just the one book to talk to you about today and that is Baby Prince by uh, F Frankie Batem and Jan, Ma uh, Superlami numero 5. Uh, this is a uh, Bon Dessinée, a French graphic novel slash comic bind up that Charlie, Charlie Heathcote sent to me. Um, this one I enjoyed more than the first one. You can see there's like a leopard thing um, with a AK-47. There's basically a military coup in this, um, but it's got all this just absurdist humour and like talking animals and all that kind of stuff in it. A lot of fun, probably more enjoyable than the first one in the series. I gave it a 3.5 out of 5. Hello, it's me. I've only got two books to wrap up for you today. Uh, I read Butcher's Crossing by John Williams. Um, John Williams wrote Stoner, which was my favorite book of the year. I went into this meaning to do a review, but it was one of those where I just got so absorbed in the book, I just wanted to read it. I, I didn't really want to keep stopping to tab things out. I did really enjoy it though, four out of five. It's like a Western novel basically about this guy who pulls a team together to go buffalo hunting but then they get snowed in and all kinds of stuff happen. Um, it's very reminiscent of, to me it was like John Steinbeck meets Ernest Hemingway who are uh, two cracking authors so you know it's going to be good. Uh, it says on the back the New York Times said it paved the way for Cormac McCarthy. Overall really did enjoy, would recommend. Uh, I'm sorry I didn't do a review, you'll have to read my written review instead. And then I read Rinky Tink of Oz by L. Frank Baum. So this is part of the buddy read I'm doing with Joel Swagman where we're reading the Wizard of Oz series. This was just okay. You, we're now at the point where it's clear that Frank, L. Frank Baum was sick of Oz. Um, this was basically a standalone that just had a bit of lip service towards Oz at the end. In fact, I think that tab there, that one right at the end of the book, that's the first time Oz even got mentioned. Uh, Rinky Tink is a character in it. Um, but yeah, it was okay. Probably like 3.5 out of 5. I didn't really have too much to say about it. I mean, I'm going to film my review in a minute and I've just got not, not very much to say about it. Sorry, Joel. I don't, I don't know whether he, he does like some 40 minute review sometimes. I don't think it's possible to get 40 minutes out of this. It was just okay. So yeah, 3.5 out of 5. Hello everybody, just the one book to wrap up for you today and that is The Machine Crusade, book 2 in... The Legends of June series by Brian Herbert and Kevin J. Anderson. Uh, this is a prequel to the June books, but like a long ago prequel. So by the time the June series begins, there's already been uh, the Butlerian Jihad, which is the war between humans and machines, basically. And this is the second book in a trilogy that tells the story of that war. Um, and uh, yeah, the first book was a lot better, a lot more interesting. Uh, this one, it took a little while for me to get into it, but then I was pretty hooked by the end. So that's good. Um, and I liked a lot of the stuff in terms of like how it looked at things like AI and stuff like that, which are obviously very relevant to our human society today as well. Um, so yeah, like 3.5 out of 5 for me. Full review coming soon. I didn't tab out a huge amount though, so don't expect loads. Hello people of the internet, I just have the one book to wrap up for you today and that is The Lost Princess of Oz by L. Frank Baum. This is the latest in the Oz series, I've been doing this as a buddy read with Joel Swagman. I am pleased to say, 
I actually really enjoyed this one. This one was a solid four out of five. I can't go any higher than that. Um, but one of the reasons why is because it felt like old school Oz. I mean, we start out with Dorothy, for example, and like she's just been a bit player for the last six books or whatever. Um, all of the sort of well-known characters are in it throughout rather than just coming in at the end. Um, and then you've got the gimmick of Oz, Ozma has disappeared. Um, so they have to go out and find her. Um, there is one point at which Dorothy's like, oh yeah, I got my magic belt that she can make wishes with. So it's like, why, why don't you just wish that you knew where Ozma was? But, you know, L. Frank Baum, that would never happen. It also has this cute little pink thing on the back. So yeah, four out of five, pretty good. Full review coming soon, keep your eyes peeled. All right, guys, just the one book to wrap up for you today. That is Of Myths and Mothers. This is a short story anthology by Fly on the Wall Poetry Press. It contains, I think, five stories. So let's have a look. It contains May We Know Them by Gaynor Jones, How to Dress a Rabbit by Clayton Lister, Memory Chip by Helen Nathaniel Fulton, The Last of the Nest Gatherers by Sasha Akhtar, and Pass Through the Waters by Kenzie Millar. I would say Memory Chip was probably my favourite just because it kind of delivered with sort of technologicalization. The cat's just jumped up. Um, and it was set in uh, West Germany in the 1970s and I'm learning German so it was kind of interesting to see it from that point of view. Overall really well written short story collection. I would have liked it to have been longer, that's really my only criticism. It, it could have got another two stories in it uh, without being too long but um, yeah I did enjoy it and I like the fact that the themes are all around motherhood as well, very cool stuff. Good one for Mother's Day, if you need a Mother's Day gift. Uh, would recommend four out of five stars. Well, anyway, those are all of the books that I read in February. It's already the 5th of March. I've left this a little bit late, so I have a bunch more books to wrap up as well for March. But as always, thanks a lot for watching. Don't forget to hit that like button if you've enjoyed this video. Let me know in the comments if you've read any of these books and if so, what you thought of them. Hit that subscribe button for more, and I will see you soon for another bookish video. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.